I just gotta ask, like, why would anybody want to go work for WWE anymore? If you're not from some type of wrestling family or WWE related family where you know you've gotten in no matter how good or bad you are, why the hell would you want to go there? If you don't have something in your contract that's going to guarantee you a certain push, a certain amount of money for a certain length of time, if you're not getting no cut contracts, the hell are you doing? Why are you going there? So why would anybody do it at this point? Because you know more often than not, you're going to be chewed up, wasted, and they'll ultimately split up, spit out. Easy for me to say. Holy shit. And of all the nerve, the WWE does this right after their Q3 earnings call where they're boasting about their big numbers and they're raising their projections for the next fiscal quarter going into 2022. And they come back today after that and say, let's release them all. We're going to wipe God off of the face of NXT and WWE. That's such good shit, pal. That's such good shit. I mean, holy hell, they took a blowtorch to this frickin' roster. Now, let me say this. A few things that are important to get out of the way. Because as inevitably always is going to be the case, you're going to have those that will always make excuses, rationales, defenses, justifications, some of them valid and worth hearing, and others just completely, totally fucking ridiculous. The WWE absolutely has a bloated roster. So, by nature, like some of these talents had to go. It always sucks to see people lose their jobs, to see them get cut like this. That's true. Reality is, if we were in that same spot of a Vince McMahon or a Nick Khan, we'd look at some of these cats and be like, why the fuck do we have them? We're never going to make any money with them. Better to get rid of them now. Harsh, but true. When you also look at these names, while you see the wrestling bubble of the wrestling internet, the wrestling media, talking about how this person was a tremendous loss and that person was a tremendous loss, and my God, the reality is, is it's a blip in the radar for this company and none of them really mattered that much. We might have wanted some of them to. We might have hoped they could have been more. Some of them absolutely should have been more. But the reality is, their loss will not be felt. Their loss absolutely will not matter. That is for any name on this list. Now, some of that absolutely is due to the WWE's own creation. Like, they made it that way. But it still holds true. Nothing of impact happens by releasing any of these wrestlers, excuse me, these sports entertainers from their independent contractor contracts. Nothing. And frankly, when you look at any of them, you say, was WWE ever really going to do big things with any of them? Maybe a couple of them you want to believe that they would. But obviously, they released them today, so no the fuck they weren't. They weren't that bought into them. They didn't believe in any of them. And you look at these names, and they feel so random in some ways. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So while no, a company shouldn't necessarily have to keep a bunch of wrestlers on their contract just for charitable sake, there are also really incredibly horrendously bad optics here of, hey, we got massive record revenues and operating incomes and we're raising our profit projections. And then we got to cut a whole bunch of people to the budget cuts. Uh, Johnny Ace here, you got to cut them due to budget cuts. Makes you wonder, did they actually like bother to call all these talents or did they do like a text or an email say, Hey, sorry, kid, it's not going to work out. Best of luck in your future endeavors. And certainly you're going to have those that will talk about, Well, you know, these guys and gals could go any number of places now. Oh, that's true. And then what? Just because there are other options doesn't mean they're a great options. Doesn't mean for some of these guys and gals that WWE was ever really a great option, frankly. But again, why in the fuck would anybody want to go to work for WWE? That's what I don't care. But some of these names are just egregious. 
Like, here's what I don't understand. If you're actually going to believe the budget cut bullshit, which we know is bullshit, stop it! Then why in the fuck would you cut a Keith Lee or a Karrion Cross, a Scarlett Boudreaux, a Frankie Monet, a B-Fab? B-Fab just appeared on fucking SmackDown as a part of Hit Row, a faction that you seemed like you were going to give them a little bit of a push. Why in the hell would you cut one of the core members from that group? Again, that doesn't make any sense. You cannot make the argument that this was planned out because nobody would sit there and waste television time on somebody that you're just going to release two weeks later. That's fucking stupid, so stop it. And in terms of just in general budget cuts, you have to imagine, to some level, the contracts of Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, Scarlett Boudreaux, Frankie Monet, BFAB, and probably could fucking throw Ember Moon in there as well, probably all of them combined equal the contract of one <laughs> fucked off Ziggler. So if you're going to use this budget cut bullshit saying, well, they're not getting a return on the investment. You know they're paying Dolph Ziggler like three quarters, almost a million dollars a fucking year. They're never getting any return on investment on that suspect ass piece of shit. But you're going to tell me this is about budget cuts? Bullshit. And even if it was, what would you rather have? Would you rather have <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler or would you rather have Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, Scarlet Boudreaux, Frankie Monet, Ember Moon, B-Fab? I'm taking the five to six over the one because you've invested years in this one and they ain't fucking worked out. Some of these other ones might have a potential to do more. So I don't even buy the budget cut bullshit at this point. Greed, sure. But even then, how much are they really saving here? Maybe a couple of million dollars with all the different talents that they released? That's peanuts. So stop it. Anybody that defends this is budget cuts is biting off the WWE dick and they need to stop that shit. Almost makes you wonder if there's some other type of factor here. Like were several of these guys and gals unwilling to get vaccinated? I find that really interesting with like a Keith Lee and Mia Yim, especially because of what happened to Keith Lee. Like, hey, we'll let you take time and nurse yourself back to health. And then once you do, you're fired. Like, what the fuck? I'm sure some of these cats didn't get vaccinated, refused to get vaccinated. And, you know, fair or not, the reality is, is like, if WWE's told you you need to get vaccinated and you fucking don't, then you need to be shown the fucking door, I guess. But then you also have to ask yourself, you're going to tell me somebody like a Jackson Riker or Sasha Banks? Some of them idiots, they're fucking vaccinated. Excuse the fuck out of me. Well, we know better than that. But yet they still have jobs? Like, how the hell does Jackson Riker have a damn job? Or whatever the fuck his name is. How the hell does he have a damn job over somebody like a Keith Lee or Karrion Cross? And you look at this. Even if you want to look at it and say, well, these guys and gals were never going to make it. Da -da 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 -da. You can't tell me Keith Lee didn't have some type of potential. You can't tell me Karrion Cross didn't have some type of fucking potential. Bullshit! Oh, they want to go with the models. Or the sexy women. So why the fuck did they cut Scarlett Boudreaux and Eva Marie? Hell, they make a big deal about Eva Marie coming back, invest all their television time in her just to fucking release her. There's no logic here. Stop trying to find logic where there is none. Because there isn't. It's random as shit without there being some type of other mitigating circumstance like vaccination status or something else, a lot of these releases don't make any damn sense. Like you got some that even, haven't even been there a fucking year in the performance center and you're releasing them already. Like you look at a Frankie Monet married to fucking John Morrison. A couple of months ago, didn't she have like a shot at the NXT women's title and then nothing more and she's gone? What the fuck? Ember Moon, somebody you've invested in a long time. Harsh to say it or not, but, you know, probably reached a point in time where she did need to go. But did you really do everything you could have with her? Like, that's what I don't get. You've got some of these sales. Again, I come back to the BFAB thing. What the fuck is that all about? It just doesn't make any rational business sense. You have invested in this talent 
put them in a spot just so that way you can immediately fucking release them? No wonder your audience is shrinking and interest is shrinking because why in the hell would any viewer, any fan, any consumer get emotionally invested in anything you fucking do when they know all these talents are just commodities, they're props, cogs in the wheel that you could easily replace at any damn time? Like how the hell, like somebody like Anaya Jax, okay, come and gone like that being the Rock's cousin shit only lasts but so long. So you can see like her being released. But leasing like Scarlet, B-Fab, Mia Yim, and yet Tamina and Italian Dana Brooke all still have fucking jobs. And this is not about me advocating for somebody to get fired. This is just pointing out the stupidity in the decision making here. For some of these ladies, you never even gave them a fucking chance. For these other ones, you've given them chance after chance. They haven't fucking done anything with it. And they're certainly got to be paid more based off of their tenure there. Yet you keep them and you release the cheaper ones? Again, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, Karrion Cross, he put on the fucking helmet. You broke him up on Scarlet, which was part of the whole fucking packaging and presentation at NXT all that goddamn time. Oh, but you got to let it play it off. You got to know what you can do to play it out. Durr! Fuck you. That's how you play it out. Stupid asses. Next time you see anybody that says WWE related anything, you gotta let it play it out and see. You should immediately tweet bomb them by telling them in 200 characters or less, ah, 280 characters or less, why they need to kick themselves in the cock cunt and or both. I'm not here to judge. Equality. They all get kicked in the fucking groin. Like you bring Karrion and Cross up, fucking do stupid shit with them. Break them all from the gimmick that was actually working in your developmental, which is a part of the whole goddamn point of why you have a developmental. So you change everything about him once he gets to the main roster, put the lame-ass fucking helmet on him, and then you're like, huh, oh, Vince, Kevin Dunn needs a carrot. Oh, excuse me. I don't think this carrying cross is working out. I just don't know. What about you, Nick? I mean, Tony. I mean, Nick Khan. I don't know how Nick Khan fucks and sounds, and I don't give a shit. He's probably like, Yo, I'm better than Tony Khan. I don't see it either. And Vince is like, That's such good shit. You gave it the old college try. He's fired. And because Scarlet married his loser ass, she's fired too. Send him a wedding present. It's their pink slip, bitches. There's just no defense of this. Again, without some other type of mitigating circumstances, you cannot put up any good defense, any logic, any rationale, any justification. I guess you still got people that are stupid enough to think that the Bearcat thing was something that Keith Lee came up with. I guess it's a reminder of the level of intelligence or lack of intelligence we're dealing with with wrestling fans and wrestling in general today. You really think that Keith Lee came up with Bearcat on his own? That's some tribute to it. Ain't tribute to shit! That's Vince and Kevin Dunn and Nick Khan and their dumb fucking asses. And again, you talk about Keith Lee. They were just doing vignettes, weren't they, on Raw? I don't watch Raw, partially because of reasons like this. I don't watch Raw for three hours. Why the fuck would I do that to myself? But weren't you just running vignettes about Keith Lee coming back against the Bearcat coming back? Was that just fucking internal code to remember that once he was cleared medically, you could fire him and Mia Yim? Is that what this was fucking about? Like, I feel bad for all these guys and gals. You could make an argument they did it to themselves by ever going to WWE in the first place, and they certainly can fucking make that argument. A lot of them certainly are going to say, God, I'm glad from there. Now, uh, please don't be sitting there doing a bunch of videos online talking about it's prison. You got paid a decent amount. In some cases, not do shit, shit. So sit down, shut the fuck up, have a Coke and a smile, and move on to your next fucking gig. Well, this is fucking stupid. Keith Lee and Karrion Cross get shown the door, but <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler still has a job, Drew Gulak has still has a goddamn job, Jackson Riker still has a goddamn job, Mustafa Ali, what the fuck's he ever done? He has a goddamn job, and as much as I like him, no offense here, but you're talking about bigger contracts that you're not getting a return on investment. Glorious Robert Roode, why the hell is he still there? So again, you can't even use the budget cut bullshit 
because they didn't even even release the people that had the largest contracts that were easily fucking disposable of. I mean, no offense here, but Ricochet is another one. There's a dime a dozen guy for this company. I don't know what the fuck to do with him. Like, seriously. You got so many other talents you could have released that if you were actually trying to make the budget cut argument works. And you didn't release them. It's like, basically, you were trying to be blasphemers and get God out of your history of your company and specifically NXT. Because so many of these cats were freaking Triple H people. But even that then doesn't make sense. It, it just... This is so fucking stupid. Did they absolutely have roster bloat? Absolutely. Did some of these people need to go? Yes. Did some of these people have little to no potential and never really were going to do anything, so why not cut your losses now? Absolutely. Did some of these people perhaps have a little bit of potential but be overrated by... The internet wrestling fan base? Oh, the fuck you say? No! But can you absolutely point to some of these and say, this is like a self-defeating prophecy, prophecy where the WWE literally undercut some of these guys and gal, fucked them over, it seems like, almost intentionally, just so they could fire their asses? Hell yeah, you could say that! Like you, again, you look at the people like a Keith Lee and a Karrion Cross. I keep on coming back to those two because those are two of the more notable ones. And you say, how the fuck did this company not figure it out with one of these guys, let alone both of them? And then even if you want to just go down the women in the looks department, especially now that you got Johnny Ace there, it's a valid point to bring up. Then how the fuck did Scarlett Boudreaux get a massive push? And the whole B-Fab shit. Like, that feels like some personal shit. Like, I'm going to troll you by putting you on national television and then immediately fucking yanking you. For what? Unfucking believable man. Like, what more can you really say? On a day where you got a bunch of lame asses in the Wrestling Observer Universe... Trying to make excuses for Dynamite's piss poor ratings this week. When you got people in wrestling media sitting there talking about, I'm breaking the exclusive news that this wrestler literally tweeted about 10 goddamn minutes ago that they got released, but somehow this is a hot scoop and you assholes give guys like that credit? You got all these damn releases. And for what? To save a little bit of money that you don't fucking need to save? When you could have cut fewer people that you've invested way more in and gotten way less of a return of investment on by proportion and saved a lot more money? Yeah, I don't believe this bullshit for a second. This is either some COVID shit. This is some on some personal shit. This is some something or something like somebody like a Triple H really likes some of these talents and it's a Nick Dunn, Nick Khan, uh, Kevin Dunn. What's up, Doc? Let's like daddy guy. He really wears me out about my bucky teeth and my love of carrots. Um, camera cut, camera cut, camera cut, camera cut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is innovating 21st century TV production. Fucking asshole. So what you're dealing with is just a bunch of assholes. They don't care. And that's the reality. I wish the best for all these guys and gals that got released. It was bullshit. It was unnecessary. I even cut Harry Smith. I why'd you make a big deal about bringing him back and then you did nothing with him? This is so fucking dumb. The right hand's not communicating with the left hand. I don't fucking know. And you still got people that try, try to defend this shit or even some that will be in your wrestling media that will try to play counterculture and try to speak logic to it when they're sounding the most fucking illogical of all. And as far as the whole thing of, oh, they can go to an AEW. I can't wait to see Keith Lee in AEW. Really? So what? He can fucking jo job out to Orange Cassidy? The fuck's wrong with you? You think Tony Khan and his company is automatically the magical, mystical place where all these talents can go and everything will be right with the world? Have you seen what he's done with a lot of these guys that got released by WWE? Are you fucking kidding me?
or the Andrade and Malachi. Would you really call what they've done with those guys good? Look at the bullshit they did with Miro at the beginning. Did you call that good? Come on, man. Oh, they could go to an impact and then nobody will talk about them. Why? Because it's fucking impact. Nobody cares. Oh, they should start a union. Oh, yeah, because the unions do so good in so many other places. Now, maybe you could point to sports as an example where they do work. And in a lot of cases, they do. When you talk about sports, you talk about other unions and you talk about wrestling, right? it wouldn't be nearly as good as you think it would be. So you need to stop coming off of that. That ain't going to work. Like, how the fuck do you expect that's going to work? Just saying. So I'm looking at a bunch of people that got released when there were a bunch of other people that, if anything, you should make the stronger argument if this is actually about budget cuts and saving money that they should have long since cut their ties with, but they haven't. And who fucking knows why? But a lot of this shit doesn't make any goddamn sense. And even if you want to believe like it's because they weren't vaxxed, you know goddamn good and well in that company, there are plenty of other talents that don't have the vaccine either. So I ain't buying that shit either. It's this company is just picking random shit up out of a hat. There is no fucking plan. You need to stop pretending like there is. This isn't the Vince McMahon of old. This is old man Vince McMahon. There is no plan. None of it makes any fucking sense.